Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today's match goes pretty crazy. This is a super interesting match, both with some really fun teams. And as always, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Less than half the people who watch these videos are subscribed. So you really help me out. Anyway, today's matchup is looking pretty weird. They got some mons that I haven't seen around for a while. However, I got the power of the sun on my side. And so there truly never has been a more powerful squad. So let's jump into the battle. So my opponent is going to lead off with the camera up. I decide to toss out the Torkoal. We got a couple of Gen 3 Fire Chads out here, ready to have a nice time. I figure, hey, Granny's in the background. You're going to get your asses sunburnt. I set up that drought, and of course, my team kind of relies on that. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and compare Stealth Rocks here, and mine turned out to be a little bit larger. But we got an interesting matchup in that uh, we could both just hit each other with super effective ground moves, and I know that Torkoal can at least take one. So I decide, you know, my team doesn't really like having rocks up that much. Uh, so my plan for this turn is to try to go for the Rapid Spin. I know I can take at least an Earthquake or an Earth Power, whatever he decides to go for. Turns out goes for the Earthquake, Shellfire takes, you know, about half. As long as this turtle stays alive, I can switch it in at any point later and get that Drought back up. I'm totally fine with that. So I decide to go for the Rapid Spin there. And what that does do is opens up a unique situation to where old Humpback over here is going to do one of two things. He's either going to go for the Stealth Rock again or just goes for the Earthquake seeing that it kills. I'm going to decide to switch into the Sub Floofer. And that is because Noivern can come in, dodge an Earthquake. I really expect him to go for the Earthquake here, trying to just knock out the Torkoal. Uh, regardless, if he does Stealth Rock, I just get to come in for free, and that is fine. So, Young Floofer comes in with his fluffy-ass scarf, and it turns out he does go for the Stealth Rock. So, does predict the switch there. Kind of obvious his Torkoal is important to keep that sun up on my team. But now Noivern is in a situation where it's damn near Thanksgiving dinner, and I'm ready to start feasting. You do not want to go up against a Noivern. I'll tell you who switches into a Noivern easily. Goddamn nothing. I go for the Terra Normal. Noivern is actually one of the Pokemon that's able to take advantage of the new Terra mechanic in that extra boosted stab on a Boom Burst with the Life Orb. There is nothing on the face of this Earth other than like, I guess, a, a Ghost type that can come in on this thing. So, he's actually going to end up switching into the Florges. So I go ahead and go right for the nice little Terra and bitch. I got Bling on top of my head out here. And I'll tell you what, Noivern's got one diamond for exactly as many shits as this guy gives. And that's one. He only cares about eating out here, and so I go right for the Boom Burst here. Now, Floridges is a very specially defensive Pokemon. A lot of the time, you're going to see these things just basically soap up, soak up special attacks, sometimes Assault Vest. That is going to do well over a half, and I told you, there's nothing that can switch into this thing. Floridges, if anything on his team, was the one that could handle it. But that flower gets absolutely roasted and toasted, and at the cost of using my Terra super early, uh, I'm able basically to just take care of the main special defense wall. So that is great, because that is a big problem for... Uh, Scovillain, I know it could take at least one attack. Uh, so we're out here taking names and having a good time, just flapping around, just doing Noivern type shit. So, now he gets a free switch and decides to go into the Miss Maggie. Now this thing uh, doesn't have much that can outspeed me and do much. I decide to go for the U-turn. Turns out, he's actually going to trick. So it reveals that it's actually Choice Scarf because it's able to outspeed. And now Subfloofer sub is Choice Scarf. Now that's a little bit bad. Because uh, this thing is kind of just like a backup uh, sunny day user at the late game. But honestly, I'm fine getting the Choice Scarf. Now I can just bring that thing back in at some point and just be, you know, still clicking Boom Burst all day. So now I get a free switch into whatever I want. And I feel like, you know what? Yeah, it's it's time for dessert. I'm going to bring in the Scream Tail. Young Cheesecake coming in looking adorable as hell. But do not mistake, this thing will absolutely eat your children. So I'm able to activate the Protosynthesis, which is going to give me a special defense boost. Uh, which gives me a little bit of an upper hand against this Ms. Maggie matchup. And so the idea behind this thing is basically just to be super bulky and just poke holes in teams enough for, you know, my sweepers in the back to be able to finish things off once they've been chipped. But do not underestimate Homegirl over here with the ponytail. We can absolutely be a sweeper in ourselves in that uh, this thing is super hard to take down. And not a lot of people know what these things are going to do. So he's going to end up switching into... Uh, old croissant ears, the <laughs> Indeedy, as I go right for a nice little bulk up. So now I'm sitting pretty with plus one attack, defense, and special defense. The only downside to the protosynthesis is it actually goes away with the sun. Uh, but that is fine. As long as I'm able to get that nice little, little, little bulk up there, I'm actually in a pretty good position because I actually do carry uh, the crunch, which is great against the Indeedy. So I really don't know what this thing wants to do, to be honest. I just go right for the crunch. It's going to do a nice bit of damage there. Easy to hit kill especially with a defense drop, and we just take a nice little bite out of that croissant. As he actually ends up going for the Calm Mind, does not see the Scream Tail as a threat, and that, my dude, was the first mistake. So, unfortunately, the Sunlight is going to go away, so I lose that special defense boost, which sucks. 
However, I know I can easily just knock this Ndidi out and I can take a hit in the process and Screamtail is out here just bouncing around looking like a delicious cheesecake. So, I'm gonna end up going for the Psychic Fangs. The reason for that is because I actually expect a switch and I would like to get some stab damage and I know that I'm actually pretty close to being able to do like half to everything. So, he's actually gonna end up switching into the camera up. So this thing comes back in unsuspecting as hell, just get a bite taken out of you, we young vampire out here, and uh, right to the nose. That's actually gonna knock this thing down to like 10 HP. Uh, unfortunately, not able to grab the kill there. However, Ancient Jigglypuff got some legs on her and I am able to outrun the camel. And uh, one more Psychic Fangs is gonna take care of it. So that's a big Mon out of the way. And the Screamtail is positioned super well about now. There's nothing they have on their team that's super effective against me. And at that plus one, I'm looking pretty nice. So on the free switch, they decide to go into Big Booty Judy. And uh, damn, she thick as hell. So of course we wanna take a bite out of it. And that is actually gonna end up knocking that thing out with the crit. I don't see that mattering unless this was like a super defensive Serena. Plus, I don't really know if it had anything in return to do much to uh, the Screamtail. So, it looks looking like we're having a pretty solid time just running through the team, although there is a surprise, so stick with me here. They decide to go into the Ndidi, and the Stealth Rock knocks it to Salic Berry range. So now, Ndidi's gonna be over here with a plus one speed boost, gets back up the Psychic Surge, and I'm thinking, what is he cooking? I am honestly kind of intrigued. So. Uh, I am just going to go for the crunch here as the safest option, as he actually ends up going for the baton pass. So I'm thinking, okay, you're going to pass a plus one speed boost, but realistically, what is going to happen to the Screamtail here? I'm bulky as hell, and you're running low on attackers. So it turns out the end of going into the Red Bull gives you wings, gets that Intimidate, which is actually quite unfortunate as I go for the crunch here, and it does, uh, like, negative damage. So we damn near here, heal the freaking Tauros. As now I'm like, okay, well, all I need to really do is click Psychic Fangs. I'm wondering about a potential Terra, as they do end up going for the Terra here. So this is the one situation where, okay, shit, Cheesecake might actually be in a little bit of trouble. But honestly, this thing only has a plus one speed boost. So how bad could it be? As he actually just grows some flowers on his head, turns into a grass type, which is interesting. And uh, goes for the Swagger, which 10 out of 10 did not expect. So gives me that sharp attack boost and confuses me in the process. And I'm like, okay. Interesting, and then boom! This thing actually has the Mirror Herb, which is now gonna copy my attack boost. And that's actually a really interesting set because it comes in, intimidates me, so I'm at minus one. Uh, and then goes for that Swagger, so then puts that at plus two. So I'm only really is at plus one, but he gets the Mirror on the Swagger. It's a real interesting situation, but regardless, I fucking hit myself in the face on the first turn, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. I got the longevity. I'm pretty, I'm pretty thick out here. I can definitely take some attacks. Goes for the Raging Bull. And uh, with that defense boost, I'm looking pretty safe to take one more. So all I gotta do is bust through this confusion, please, duckies. And I don't. Hit myself in the face again, which is quite bad because now, uh, after the leftover recovery, it's looking like it could be a potential roll on whether or not I die to this next attack. So I'm thinking, please, Screamtail, I need you to not hit yourself in the face here. I swear to God. Goes for the Raging Bull. I'm able to live it with 5 HP and now it's game time. If I don't get an attack here, I'm screwed. Cheesecake is going to actually break through, and I go for the play rough, thinking it'll be enough. Um, I should have for sure gone for the Psychic Fangs, because with that boost from the Psychic terrain, so that was definitely an oversight on my end. But what I did do is put this thing in range to where, okay, as long as I have something that can outspeed, I should be safe. So this is a very scary Tauros at the moment. It has uh, that attack boost from the Swagger, it's got the Salic boost from the Baton Pass, but I actually have a gift from the opponent, and that is Choice Scarf Noivern, who is easily able to outspeed a plus one Tauros. And now I'm pretty thankful for grabbing that Choice Scarf. I mean, I was still able to get up Sun uh, and then Chlorophyll, but still, uh, Noivern is able to come in here, and I decide to go for the U-turn in case there's any switch shenanigans, but you know, they still have the Stealth Rock up. So there's pretty much nothing that Tauros can do there. If he was able to get the three Parahacks, that would have been insane. I would have been forced to just go for uh, the boom burst regardless, but the Tauros goes down and the Screamtail is just cut short. I thought we were homies. He was going so good and then just all of a sudden just hit yourself in the face twice in a row, which really uh, made that a little bit scary. So now on the empty battlefield here, I go. I went for the U-turn on the kill so that I could bring in Torkoal. And I know with that sun staying up, I should be able to try to pull off a late game sweep uh, with the peppers here. So Torkoal basically just needs to come in, get his little drought action and then die as he's going to go into the Miss Magius. So, uh, I know that I have no chance to switch into anything, all I really need to do is just take an attack and sack this thing. Uh, with that sun up for 8 turns, it should be ample enough time for the peppers to do his thing. So, Shadow Ball does kill my dude Shellfire, but that is fine, did exactly what I needed to do. 
Uh, it's actually kind of crazy that Torkoal is in UU. The power of Sun in honestly any weather is insane, especially in lower tiers. But uh, So now I get a free switch, and I'm thinking it's time for two of my best homies, Hab and Nero, and we're about to come in here um, and easily outspeed, outspeed everything with my little jeans on. Look at his, his shiny version is so sweet because he's got the, the sick little jeans. So <laughs> I'm both looking stylish and extremely scary because a sun-boosted flamethrower with a life orb with that stab and able to outspeed with chlorophyll, there's not a whole lot that you can do against a well-played late game pepper. Let alone two peppers. It's damn near unfair at this point. But the last Pokemon is going to be that Ndidi. Uh, knocks it down to red with the Stealth Rock. Gets up that Psychic Surge just to spill a little grape juice on the battlefield one last time. But a Flamethrower uh, is going to easily take care of it. So I thought that was a super interesting match. Uh, the Swagger with the Mirror Herb Tauros really kind of almost ruined my plans there. Uh, with the Screamtail, but I'm really proud of the Screamtail in general. So, anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this battle. I thought it was just a pretty fun one to, to post out here. But if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a comment. I really do like reading all the comments that you guys post. And all the support is insanely appreciated. So thank you guys again, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.